finish it on ESPN 2 HD, brought to you by Olivia. It is one of the better rivalries within the Big East as we welcome you to Freedom Hall here in Louisville. Marquette and the Cardinals a year ago up in Milwaukee. Jerry Smith, a native of the state of Wisconsin, with a back-breaking three to beat the Golden Eagles. Smith is back here in Louisville tonight to take on lightning quick guard Dominique James and Marquette. It's all coming up next from Freedom Hall. Thursday night showcase here on ESPN presented by T. Rowe Price where it's sold out Freedom Hall here at Louisville for a matchup between the Cardinals and the Marquette Golden Eagles. A Thursday night matchup here in the Big East. Dramatic things always seem to happen between these two teams and the games inevitably seem to go right down to the wire. Everybody, Dan Shorman and Len Elmore, glad you're along with us tonight and looking forward to this game here tonight. These are two teams, Len, with a lot on the line. Big time aspirations in this league. Well, both these teams are picked to finish in the top three in the conference regular season play. And to do that, you got to hold service at home and steal a few on the road. Now, with the Big East 18 game format, it expands the possibilities that anything can happen. So every game at this stage has impact. The pressure's on Louisville to be able to hold service at home, even if it means upsetting number 13 Mark. Yet. No shortage of talent on these two teams. It wasn't all that easy to pick a star watch, but we settled on a couple of point guards. Well, Dominique James from Marquette, top 10 in the conference, steals and assists. He can be a game changer on both ends. And Edgar Sosa has regained his starting spot. Rick Pitino says he's now starting to understand what it means to be a point guard. A Marquette team with experience, talent, speed, a great backcourt. One of the best perimeters in America with a Dominique James, Jarrell McNeil, the 2007 Big East Defensive Player of the Year, and Wesley Matthews up front for the Golden Eagles, Dwight Burke and Lazar Hayward, who just might be the most improved player in the conference this year. For the Cardinals, who are at their healthiest of any point so far this season, Edgar Sosa back into the starting line of his fifth start of the season, along with Jerry Smith, a native of Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, about 10 miles outside Milwaukee. Terrence Williams, Juan Palacios, and Derek Character up front. A lot of depth for the Cardinals in the front court when they are healthy, and they're as close to fully healthy right now as they've been all year. Juan Palacios has it stripped away by Hayward, and we are underway here in Louisville. And that's just the kind of start Tom Crane wants. His team leads the Big East and steals. Rick Pitino told us they're the best slap down steal team maybe in the nation, and you had an example right there. Marquette averaging better than 10 steals per game and coming off a drubbing of Notre Dame on the weekend in which they had 17 steals a point Rick Pitino made over and over again at practice yesterday as Palacios picks up the first foul of the game. Now Rick Pitino has gone over 500 wins in his career this year now 506 154 of them here at Louisville and it seems every year Len they have to deal with injuries this year David Padgett and Juan Palacios both are back neither is a hundred percent but at least now you can see how the Cardinals could live up to those preseason expectations and the fact that they're not a hundred percent doesn't matter as much as the fact that they are on the floor because what they do is they give the younger players a lot of confidence out there both of them are leaders particularly David Padgett and the guys just seem to play better they flow better when those guys are on the floor Hayward knocks down the free throws there's Padgett back from a broken kneecap and he will see extensive minutes off the bench tonight for Louisville and then that last Marquette offensive possession, Louisville was playing some sort of zone. Looked like a 2-3, but you can never tell these days. What a sweet feed inside from Sosa to character. You talked about it in the open. Sosa starting to understand the mentality of a point guard. Well, it comes down to what Rick Pitino tells him. If you're on the weak side without the ball, you're going to think shot. You have the ball, you think pass first. And he certainly did that time. Terrence Williams throws it away. Dominique James with Marquette's second steal. The bounce pass to McNeil for the layup. This is what Louisville needs to avoid. The open floor turnovers, which translate into steals. Marquette extraordinarily adept at running the transition game. And they've got a terrific one at the point in Dominique James. Jerry Smith with an O-look feed underneath and Terrence Williams lays it home to tie it up and now a steal by the Cardinals Smith with a left hand and he's fouled boy how active is Jerry Smith 
Over the last six games, averaging almost 15 points and four rebounds, a knockdown three-point shooter. Good nose for the ball there, though. Tom Crane pacing early, always. Probably walks more, runs more than his players during practices. And he's had an outstanding run into Marquette, and just like Rick Pacino's had in Louisville. Of course, uh, the highlight for Tom Crean, his tenure at Marquette, the final four run with Dwayne Wade a few years back. And you watch Tom Crean's practices, quickly the shoot around. He runs it pretty quickly, game pace. Very sharp, very crisp, keeps the guys focused. Terrence Williams, nice feet underneath, and character another lay-in. T-Will, as he's known to his teammates, the junior for the Cardinals, does a little bit of everything for them. Well, he's focused on passing and rebounding. Averaging about four assists and eight rebounds over the last couple of games. Had 14 rebounds against Rutgers, but you see right there, setting guys up. Juan Palacios with a block on Wesley Matthews. Palacios missed nine games with a torn tendon in his knee. This is one of the games that all Louisville fans circle on their calendars. Every year, of course, the game against Kentucky is big, but the game or games against Marquette right there with him. This has become a very fierce rivalry since they resumed the series back in 1996. James using the screen. Misses the three, rebound Louisville. Juan Palacios with the rebound, and that's one of the things up. Oh, bad pass. Should never give it to Smith running down the sideline because he was tight roping and wound up stepping on that sideline. And Carl Hess in a great position to make the call. He's joined by John Cowell and Tim Clockerty, our officials here tonight in front of a sellout crowd. Here at Freedom Hall, the second last year that the Cardinals will play in this building. they got a new downtown building on the way. Should be open in September 2010. So I guess two more years after this one. Another turnover by Marquette. Back come the cards. Character really working, trying to get position down low. That's the Louisville advantage on the offense. They've got size and strength inside. Character sets a hard screen on Wesley Matthews, who got rattled a little bit. Williams for three. A much improved shooter this year. Well, I think that improvement has come from better judgment. Not taking as many, not taking the bad ones, only launching the good ones this year. Louisville settling in to a 2-3 zone. Crowd getting into it here at Freedom Hall. Hayward a miss. Bodies on the floor as it goes out of bounds and back to the Cardinals. Well, you mentioned it, Dan. Terrence Williams does an awful lot of things. He sets guys up. He's got the ability to score. But the rebounding part is the thing that's really impressive. At 6'6", six, six, eight rebounds a game. He doesn't mind mixing it up inside with the big fella. You talk about a multi-dimensional player. He's in the top 15 in the Big East in rebounding, assist, and steals. He's also the leading scorer on a very balanced Cardinal team at 11.6 points per game. Sosa calling the play. Here comes character for the high screen. Shot clock under 10. Williams spots the clock and tries to fire one inside. It's off Burke out of bounds. Three to shoot for Louisville. And here comes David Padgett for the first time tonight. The senior, the captain. The leader of this team, unanimous choice as captain, even when he was out with a knee injury that could have been season or career ending. As that ball did not get the rim, so it's a shot clock violation. There was no thought on the part of the Cardinals to give somebody else the captaincy. Padgett, it's felt by his team, is truly the heart and soul of this operation. Well, that, what he has gone through really defines leadership. You can never know what the other guys are experiencing unless you go through it yourself. And when you go through it with grace, and you go through it with character as David Padgett has throughout his career. Guys have to look up to him. Plus, he's a heady player, and he makes his team better when he's on the floor, and every one of his teammates understands it. Now, you don't mean Derek character. You mean character C.H. character, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although it's probably helped Derek character to have an influence like David Padgett. Palacio sits down. Here comes Earl Clark, who is celebrating his 20th birthday today. Yeah, David Padgett puts the H in Derek character's <laughs> last name. The character suspended for one game earlier this year for repeated curfew violations. He's been in and out of the lineup in more than out this year, to be fair. Oh, nice. Sosa, great play. Oh, and he's fouled by Hayward. Hayward tracked him down pretty quickly, but quick hands by Edgar Sosa. Playing with a lot of confidence right now. Again, understanding how to be a point guard here. He just has a breakaway opportunity, but look at Hayward track him and might have been a little body contact, but good hustle on Hayward's part, but excellent play by Sosa. 
So out of New York City, a scores mentality is what Katina described it to us pregame, and you can relate. I'm sure you grew up playing with some point guards in New York who had scores mentalities. And <laughs> I thought you were relating to me. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sosa, of course, had 31 points in that second round game of the NCAA tournament a year ago against Texas A&M, a game that Louisville ultimately lost, and he had to feel for Sosa. Knocked down his first 15 free throws in that game, but he missed the final two. But this is a young man, just a sophomore, with a lot of upside. Well, he certainly does, and the thing comes down to this. As a point guard, there's three things. You push the ball up the floor, get the defense on their heels. If you have numbers, you create a play. If you don't, you set it up, make sure everybody's in position. Get the ball where it needs to be in the set, and when the shot clock's running down, say under 10, come get it back and create for yourself or other. McNeil from 15, a little strong, rebound Padgett. Padgett and Clark, the big guys in the game right now for Louisville. Here's Terrence Williams on the drive, so tough here. He and Padgett both going after the offensive rebound, and it bounces out to Sosa. Williams just inside the arc. And we get a push underneath, a foul going against Louisville to take us to our first media timeout of the night. A great start for the Cardinals, up seven early on Marquette. Years invest with confidence. And in part by Orbits.com. Orbits, keeping you a step ahead. Back in Louisville, Dan Schulman and Len Elmore with you. Glad you're with us. Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price. And the Cardinals off to a good start up seven on ranked Marquette. And if there's a wild card in a game land for Louisville, it might be Derek Character, and he's off to a good start. Derek Character, about six, seven, six, eight. Really done a nice job of trimming his body down, able to move his feet quickly. Terrence Williams. And it's nice important and to get the ball one. to him early, to utilize him early. He averages about three and a half fouls a game. But right there, there, you see his impact certainly can be felt by Wesley Matthews in that case four big men for Louisville and again Padgett and Palacios were out ten and nine games respectively this is only the fifth game this year where all four of these guys have been active for Louisville and if you if you imagine say 20 minutes for each of the four of them it's pretty good talent and depth right now for the Cardinals yeah you can wear a lot of teams down in this country even some of the top teams don't have that type of depth when I talk about top teams I'm talking about Carolina of Memphis, Kansas. You know, it's hard to match that. Dan Fitzgerald has checked into the game for Marquette along with Usman Barrow. They're at the four and five spots, respectively. On the drive, Jarrell McNeil. And it's off his leg out of bounds and back to Louisville. Already the fourth turnover committed to by Marquette. Well, we watched Marquette this afternoon work on dribble penetration, being assertive with the ball. Trying not to fiddle around outside to allow Louisville to stymie their offense. But right now, they're having a lot of trouble turning the corner. And Marquette's averaging better than 80 points per game. They have scored over 90 on four different occasions this year. So they are dangerous at the offensive end, but not clicking so far tonight. Louisville is. Sosa misses the three. It's kept alive. And behind the play, we have a foul. Carl Hess. And it'll be on Earl Clark of the Cardinals, his first. We had an opportunity in that last sequence to see the ball go inside the Louisville. And Marquette starting to double, but what the Louisville big men have to recognize, they're going to get double. they got to take the double team, make them commit, find the open man, and then repost in a position where they might have a better shot. By the way, if you haven't seen these uniforms before for Marquette, with good reason, they haven't worn the powder blue in 30 years. This is part of Converse's brand wave, and we're thinking that maybe the Golden Eagles got the family raid on this apparel, huh? This <laughs> seeing as how Dwayne is behind it, but they're looking pretty sharp out here tonight. A sweetheart <laughs> <laughs> now to a five-point deficit now after the basket by Fitzgerald, uh, who missed five games with a left wrist injury. Smith inside, Earl Clark, and a foul will go against Barrow, and this is why Barrow is now coming off the bench. He started a year ago, but he gets in foul trouble so quickly. Oh, it's on Fitzgerald, excuse me, but they wanted to bring Barrow off the bench so they don't lose him early, so they can have him late in games when they really need him. Andre McGee, number 33, into the point for Edgar Sosa right now for the Cardinals. And it's kind of worked. He's only averaging a little over two fouls per game. And he's had only two disqualifications. 
And you know, he's the experienced big man, and I think Tom Crane would rather have him, him in the game late than Burke. Padgett is fouled. A nice two-man game between Terrence Williams and David Padgett, who might be the two best passers on this team. Well, it all begins with a willingness to pass. You see the little screen right there slipping was what David Padgett did. Marquette defense didn't close quickly enough on Patrick. By slipping, we mean that you don't allow the guy who's guarding the man you're screening for to make contact. He's standing out there waiting for a switch, and then you just roll right down before there's any contact at all. When you think of Padgett, not just the broken kneecap this year, two years ago had serious surgery on both knees that at the time it was thought might curtail his career. The same thing was said about the broken kneecap now. And how about this? A statement from Padgett after the injury. They said, you know, maybe you'll be able to come back this year, maybe not. It could, it could affect. Your, your long term playing and Padgett was heard to say I don't care about professional basketball I'm not losing my senior season here at Louisville and he has come back with a couple of months to play well, that's pretty refreshing you know most guys have their eyes on the NBA or play professionally somewhere Padgett nice move left hand laying high pain threshold is David Padgett you see him running the floor Floater by Maurice Acker a little short. Patchett another rebound and a good outlet pass to Smith. Goes right at McNeil. And Andre McGee with the offensive rebound. Quick three, Terrence Williams. And it'll be Marquette Ball. Well, Jerry Smith kind of rolled the dice a little bit one-on-one -on -one, uh, against the 2007 Big East Defensive Player of the Year. And McNeil held his ground without fouling. Smith misses the layup. Terrence Williams will sit down now as Sosa's back and Louisville goes smaller with the three guards. And you can do that against Marquette, especially now as they've gone even smaller. But the ball is Maurice Acker, a transfer from Ball State. He He's only 5'8", and he's out there along with Dominique James, who's only 5'11". And Louisville goes 2-3. There's that drive against the zone, trying to get in the gaps. to got to make the layups. Fitzgerald for three. Rebound character. teams have cooled off. Marquette's never really gotten hot. Louisville had a good early spurt, but now they have slowed down as well. Clark. Think he's got any talent? Think he's got a future? Just a sophomore. What a great move by a big guy. McNeil for three. Marquette really needs one right now. Sosa hounded by James, tries to feed it inside the character. It will stay with the Cardinals as we go to a timeout. Louisville with an early nine-point lead in front of a raucous crowd. A great atmosphere tonight here at Freedom Hall. Earl Clark bringing them to their feet. Close to knocking off the undefeated number one team in the nation. Yeah, Georgia Tech, one of the teams in the ACC, actually the team in the ACC with an under 500 record, but when they're at home against Carolina, you throw that stuff out the window. Last second opportunity goes by the wayside for Paul Hewitt. I know that was agonizing. Well, bring us up to date on the alma mater. What's up with the Terps? Uh, what can they do against the Tar Heels? Well, I mean, the thing about Maryland, they haven't had an awful lot of luck lately. Losing uh, last second heartbreaker to Virginia Tech, but their style kind of matches Carolina. They will go at you and keep coming at you and force you to pay at that, play at that breakneck pace, which is what Carolina likes to do. So something's got to give. And Kansas at Missouri should be a great game. Always a great rivalry at 8 o'clock Eastern Saturday night on ESPNU in Missouri. Recently defeated Texas, so you know that the Tigers are playing some good basketball. Edgar Sosa commits the foul. Little extending the pressure, and Acker speeds right through it. The feed to Hayward, a little strong on the layup attempt. Missed opportunities for Marquette. They've had a number of chances off the bounce, off of penetration to make layups, and they just point blank missed them. Character inside, surrounded by Golden Eagles. Had it blocked. Clark misses the follow. But they're getting good looks the third time tonight. We've seen that play where Sosa threads the needle with a bounce pass inside the character. Well, the thing about Edgar Sosa, and I've been noticing in those fast break situations as Louisville applies some full court pressure with Acker running the point. 
the thing Sosa's been doing so well is he's been dribbling with his head up. You know, and his head up is looking for people, not looking for a lane where he can take a shot. Andre McGee, the foul. That is the sixth team foul. So one more will send Marquette to the line. Sosa will sit down. Jerry Smith returns for the cards. Six points in eight minutes and 40 seconds for a high scoring team. Marquette team averaging 80 points per game. However, in the last seven wins, Louisville has held teams at just 58 points, so their focus is defense. Coming off a win at Rutgers on the weekend, in which they held the Scarlet Knights to just 49 points. Hayward out of Buffalo. This is another one in close. A Louisville turnover. Numbers now five on three. And a block from behind by Clark. Cardinals are getting after it right now. McGee is called for the carry. Laurel well, Clark, a monster on both boards, defensive and offensive, right there with the length and the hops. Excellent timing. And the pass looked like it might have hit him in the rear end on the way out, and that's why they turned it back over to Marquette. Wesley Matthews. Gets it back, can't get the shot on. Louisville closing out on these shooters in a hurry. Well, this is a team that shoots the three very well, and they shoot them very frequently in conference games. Coming into this game, 100 of their 247 field goal attempts in conference game have been threes. Here's one from James. And Marquette now 0 for 6 from beyond the arc and 2 for 17 overall. And that's the problem with shooting too many threes. You live by them, but you can also go down by them. Marquette needs to continue to try to attack off the bounce and then kick it out for better looks. Sosa will check back in for McGee as Carl Hess gets between Earl Clark. Or Derek Character, rather, and Usman Barrow and tries to make sure that things don't escalate between the two big guys. This is David Kubia, number 10, part of the deep backboard for the Golden Eagles. And if you're going to attack off the bounce, right now Louisville's in man-to-man -man and not in the zone. Look at the help right there. That's what you have to do. You draw the D, then you find open men, but you got to move the ball by the pass rather than the bounce. Matthews. Rebound Louisville. You can't argue with those shots, man. They're just not knocking them down. They've had a couple around the rim. They've had a couple of free throw jumpers, but nothing going down right now for the Golden Eagles. Down by nine midway through the first half on the road here at Freedom Hall. Character calling for it. He's got a big strength advantage on Barrow. And see, he takes the double team, resets, and gets another opportunity. And that's what Rick Pitino told us he wanted his postmen to do. That's why Character had such patience down low. Watch him receive. And once he receives, he waits to see what the double does. You see, playing back and forth was Wesley Matthews, and then he resets and receives and gets fouled. Second on Barrow. Character, about 6'7", six, 6'8", six, as you mentioned, came in at 318 pounds a year ago. He's now 265, and keeping his weight down is one of the many things he has to do. He's got a signed contract with Rick Pitino. If he violates any part of the contract, he immediately gets suspended. Palacios with a baseline J. Well, further on Derek Character, you look at that body, you see he's worked hard, and that's a sign of maturity. He's becoming a man and leaving that doughboy. <laughs> Behind. And Rick Pacino has said he expects character to opt for the NBA draft after this year. Said the same oh, earlier about oh, Terrence no, Williams no, and Earl no. Clark. They say they're coming back. You think character needs a little more school? Oh, yes. Yeah. He's got to develop a position. Right now at his size, he's not an NBA post player, and he's not really savvy enough to play on the perimeter. Look at the frustration now for the Golden Eagles. The reaction after that miss by Lazar Hayward, who's been all around the rim tonight and just can't get one to go in. Their character, their character in time will be a solid basketball player and could be an NBA player, but at least another year, please. Will be on the handoff to James. Sosa all over, and now he loses him. James right at character who commits the foul. 
The mistake character made was bringing that arm down. He did everything perfectly. Took the lane away, had both hands in the air. 17 to 6, Louisville. More action as the week of impact continues with two more games Saturday afternoon. College basketball presented by Altel Wireless. Len will be up in Syracuse as Villanova's there to take on the Orange at noon. And then at 2 Eastern, it's Illinois and Purdue. Tell us about Syracuse down to about seven guys really in that rotation. Right? But you know what? I think Jim Beheim likes it that way. I mean, he, he wants to make sure guys are sharp when they're playing. Certainly the loss of Routes at the beginning of the season. And now Eric Devendorf, probably the steadiest guy on that very young team, has hurt them a lot. But I wouldn't count those two freshmen out. Actually, the bunch of freshmen that are playing right now. They're going to grow. They're going to develop and could be a force going forward. And Scotty Reynolds, Villanova, they play at a very entertaining pace. This will be fun. I'm sold. I'm watching. <laughs> You'll be there. I'm watching. Sosa with James on him. Marquette with just seven points tonight. Now Louisville could have more than they've got too. Both teams have missed around the rim. Palacio strong on the three. And the rebound to Wesley Matthews. His dad, an NBA player, played at Wisconsin collegiately. And his mom, a great track athlete. And there's some athleticism right there, although he gets called for the foul. You can see he comes by it honestly with a great athletic mom and dad. All right, tough call with some good hustle by Wesley Matthews. He actually was in front of David Padgett when he went for that rebound. Matthews sits down. But that is something Marquette needs. If you're going to miss the first, and you need guys crashing that offensive glass. But they are undersized against this big Louisville team. So that's a tall order. Hatchet back for Louisville right now as Kubion commits a foul away from the ball. A 10-point lead. And Marquette only seven points in over 12 minutes. Not getting anything done here in Louisville. 16 team biggies featuring an 18 game schedule this year. Marquette is one of four teams tied for the lead in conference play right now at 3 and 1. Louisville is at 2 and 1. And what a boost to Marquette if they could somehow come back and steal one on the road here. Because that's what it takes. You know, Marquette, Louisville, along with Georgetown, picked to finish in the top three in the conference regular season. And you've got to be able to hold service at home, as Louisville is trying to do. But you also want to steal a few on the road. That helps boost your fortune. And these two teams will meet again up in Marquette. As Blackledge gets a baseline layup, snapping a long field goal drought for the Golden Eagles. You play three teams within the conference twice, and Marquette and Louisville are matched up against one another twice this season. That's good for the rivalry and good for their strength of schedule. Two pretty good teams. Williams for three. Hadgett with a strong offensive rebound, picks it back out. This time Williams going to the rim, and he draws the foul. Well, Louisville asserting their size advantage, and you see David Padgett just rose. He's not getting that high off the ground because of the injuries, but he just rose above everybody else. But defensively, Louisville doing an excellent job, one, of keeping the penetration from turning the corner. You see right there, and then when the pass comes back out, you just see guys going east to west. They're not penetrating again, and this is what Tom Crane was worried about. You know, you put, pass the ball from sideline to sideline, not making any penetration. You're not putting any pressure on the defense. The free throw missed by Williams, but Marquette can go north-south about as well as any team in the country. So you've got to give a ton of credit to the Cardinals to be able to force them to go east to west. Absolutely, especially when a guy like Dominic James has the ball and tries to turn the corner. You sort of help step up quickly. McNeil tried to turn the corner, dribbled it out of bounds. Fifth turnover committed by the Golden Eagles. And again, it's credit to the Louisville defense. Guys on the back line are Wide awake, stepping up early, not letting guys get into the paint. Louisville in the top three in the Big East in the significant defensive categories, allowing just under 59 points per game and holding the opposition to about 37% from the field. Palacios misses from the corner, kept alive by Paget into the hands of the opportunistic Williams. The cutter is Palacios. The follow by Paget. Too much size right now for Marquette to deal with. That's right. We mentioned David Padgett, one of those guys with his length out there. May, may not have the hops that he did once, but he knows how to get good position and use the sides that he has. And against an undersized Marquette team, he's just having his way. Padgett out of Reno, Nevada, spent a year in Kansas before transferring. McNeil from the elbow. 
finally, the second follower will go for Lawrence Blackledge, a 6'8 senior out of Carbondale, Illinois. His second field goal, and a guy that Tom Green told us earlier today he was going to use more than he has generally used him this year. He needs all the size he can get against the big front line of the Cardinals. Yeah, only playing about seven minutes a game, but you can see right there, very active on the board. And when you're given that chance, you've got to make the most of the opportunity. Well, he made the most of it against Notre Dame on the weekend, played 14 minutes, made all three of his field goals, so he has earned more playing time. Catch at the handoff. Smith tries to return the favor inside. Sosa from the corner. Pretty offensive sequence there by the Cardinals. Even though a seven-footer close to the basket, I would rather not see him kick the ball back outside, but that was good inside out play. Stolen by Williams. The long pass to Jerry Smith will wind up out of bounds in the back over to Marquette. Let's go to Scott Reese now for a 30-30 update. Okay, Dan, Randy Moss has a court date of January 28th when a woman who alleges Moss committed battery against her will seek a permanent restraining order. Moss may appear in person, but he is not required to do so. And Jason Garrett shunning potential head coaching opportunities in Baltimore and Atlanta to remain offensive coordinator of the Cowboys. Sports Center, 11 Eastern ESPN. Stay current with ESPN News. Well, that news, Scott, that last bit of news may relate to Tom Crean a little bit. His brother-in-law is John Harbaugh, who now may be in line to get the head coaching job of the Ravens. Tom Crean's a bigger football fan and baseball fan as he is basketball fan. He's married to Joni Harbaugh. Her brothers, of course, are Jim Harbaugh, and it's coach at Stanford, and John Harbaugh, who may be up for the Ravens job. So Tom Crean's on pins and needles about that. And uh, Joni and Jim are here tonight. Jim Sporting of Stanford. <laughs> red. Yep. That is red. Cardinal Red. Look, it'll be exciting times for the Harbaugh family and Tom Crean, and part of that family. Tom Crean's pretty excited about the Packers being in the NFC Championship game. He's a friends with Tony LaRusso, big St. Louis Cardinal fan, so enjoyed their World Championship, World Series Championship a couple of years ago. Matthews the miss and the rebound move. Louisville, a 12-point deficit here. The Golden Eagles are just 4 for 23 from the floor, 0 for 7 from beyond the arc, but they force a turnover. Matthews shreds the defense and lays it in. More, more, more is what Tom Green is asking for as far as open floor turnovers. The ability to steal the ball and get out in transition. That neutralizes the Louisville size if they can knock the ball loose. First points of the night for Matthews as Rick Pitino calls a timeout with 4.01 to play here in the half. A 10 point lead for the Cardinals late in the first half here in Louisville. Veteran group that returns just about everybody from last year. The three perimeter players are all juniors. They've all started since their freshman year, so they're not going away so easily. Well, no, I mean, this is a team that's top five in points scored, points allowed, free throw shooting, field goal percentage, and number one in steals in the Big East and seventh nationally. They didn't get there just by going away because they're down. They know how to face adversity. They need to buckle down a little bit, particularly with the defense, be able to knock some balls loose, get some confidence by scoring on some easy transition baskets, block out, and really come to play. They're going to knock down some shots. Back-to-back 20-plus -back win seasons for the Golden Eagles. Well, news out of the Big East. Whoever thought Roy Hibbert had this kind of range of game when he shot on the weekend? Well, check out what else is going on in the Big East. When we Scott looking forward to the halftime report. 3.45 to go here. Louisville leading Marquette by 10. Louisville 12 and 4 in the season, 2 and 1 in the league. Marquette 13 and 2, 3 and 1 in the league. Earl Clark with his second field goal tonight. Len, they've both been memorable. McNeil off balance. Barrel with the offensive rebound, and they'll reset. In transition, even good things happen. After mix, you got to push the ball up if you're Marquette. Try to beat Louisville down the floor, get a good look. Because the scramble allows your guys to get some position for offensive rebounds, second chance opportunities. Oh, man. That's your unforced error right there as we get you ready for the Aussie Open. The tennis action a little bit later. Well, we misidentified somebody. There is Joan. There is Tom Green's wife. One seat to the, to the right of where we had her. So she's here along with her brother, Jim Harbaugh. There he is. Got the reading glasses on now. Didn't need them a little bit earlier, but he's checking his program right now. 
We could have used some passes on that misidentification. So our apologies to the Green Harbaugh family. Here's Clark. Driving on Hayward, stripped. And that's that slap down steal that Rick Pitino was talking about. Marquette, the best in the business at it. Golden Eagles still looking for their first three of the night. McNeil will drive. He'll kick it to Acker, who's open. And now they're 0 for 8 from beyond the arc tonight, and Louisville's got the loose ball. Williams. Well, Clark wasn't expecting it. Might have hit him in the chin before it hit him in the hands. And they turn it over again. A three on one. And Matthews has it knocked out of bounds. Good work by McGee getting back on D. He was there along with Williams. But you see what I mean when I talk about Marquette in transition. They just seem so much more comfortable running the floor with the three guards, able to get down quickly and get some good shots, but for that good defensive play by Andre McGee. Padgett, Palacios, and Sosa all returning for Louisville. Dominique James is back into the game for Marquette. James is playing with a sore right wrist that he injured just over a week ago in a win over Seton Hall. He's got it wrapped, as you can see right now. Only taking two shots. Not really involved in the offense other than being a distributor. An all-league player who toyed with the idea of going into the NBA, but withdrew his name from the draft last summer. There's a strong drive. McNeil gets it to go, and Marquette is back with intent. And they're back to the original plan. Attack. Be assertive. Marquette shooting 22%, all things considered, if they can get out of the half with a single-digit deficit cut into it a little bit more, Tom Crean might be relatively happy. There was no question that they're going to have to get back in this ball game with their defense. Louisville finding ways to score from the outside, certainly getting second-chance opportunities, posting up guys. Shot clock at five. Sosa drives. Hadgett follows. Shot clock at two. Williams. Palacios the rebound blocked from behind by Blackledge. Cardinal ball. A pretty good sequence right here. Good defensive sequence. Nice block. Palacios never saw the defender. Blackledge is giving Marquette some good minutes. the handoff for Jerry Smith, the guy who had the game-winning shot up in Milwaukee for the Cardinals a year ago. Crowder wanted a foul from behind on Blackledge. Instead, it's Smith for three. And the rebound to Hayward. Hayward and character, by the way, were teammates for a year at Notre Dame Prep in Massachusetts. Matthews. And it goes down into Marquette, back within eight. The crowd booing the officials here in the last couple of minutes, not liking the calls, or in some cases, the lack thereof. Knocked away, stolen by McNeil. And he stepped out of bounds. Louisville relaxing a little bit, and they can't afford to do so. As we mentioned, some headlines out of the Big East. What a job Keith Benjamin has done, Len, with Mike Cook out, LeVance Fields out. He and the Panthers are playing some great ball. Well, Keith Benjamin came to the Pittsburgh program with a lot of uh, advanced billing, never really got to play the way he wanted to play, and now Jamie's got no choice but to let him do his thing, and boy, is he doing it. And you look at Cincinnati again, what a surprise. Again, they started the season off the Big East season by beating Louisville right here and I think that's buoyed their confidence and the three New York City area schools really struggling a combined one for 11 in the lead David Padgett with a reverse six points for Padgett and that restores a 10-point lead for Louisville Marquette will call a timeout and set up for what they hope is one last good possession here in the half well this is what Louisville understands that their advantage is inside and as well as Blackledge is playing he's no match for David Padgett who uses his body to seal in just a quick first step to the basket that's that senior understanding of how to play the ball game we're in the middle of a week of impact here on the college basketball landscape so many important games 
games already have been played the last couple of days, and it'll run right through Saturday night. We talked to you about the Maryland, Carolina, and the Clemson Duke games, Kansas at Missouri, Kentucky at Florida. Kentucky team trying to find their way, coming off a loss to Mississippi State on Tuesday night. Florida, a loser last night. And A&M and Kansas State, an interesting game. Let's see how the Aggies bounce back after they were thumped by Texas Tech last night as Bob Knight picked up career win number 900. A week of impact, the upcoming schedule through the end of Saturday night. Now they're doing it so far. A 10-point lead over Tom Crean and the Golden Eagles Marquette. With the shot clock turned off, we'll try to hold for the final shot. And got the ball in Dominique James' hands. Maybe someone from Louisville is recognizing he's not all that involved in the offense. He's going to try to turn the corner, draw the defense if he could. Just one point tonight for James. McNeil. Five seconds left. James. So he can't, yeah, he's getting in now. And the floater goes with less than a second to go. A dismal offensive half for the Marquette Golden Eagles. Their lowest scoring first half of the season. But you know what? They're only down eight. They didn't make a three, but it's Louisville, who had shot very well early, not as well, and some turnovers late. So Marquette, it could be worse. It's 27-19 for the Cardinals at the half. Now let's send it back to the studio and join Scott Reese for the Dick Sporting Goods Halftime Report. Consistency and injuries. The Cardinals were not playing as well as they're capable of playing. They're getting more consistent, Len. They're getting healthier, and they're starting to round into form. Well, they certainly are. And again, talk, we talk about Padgett and Palacio, their presence on the floor, what it does to the younger players. And a guy like Edgar Sosa, he's the guy that really is a barometer for this team. And he got his guys started quickly, looking for his teammates as a point guard should. And when he's on the weak side, he's looking for a shot and knocks it down. And Louisville's size advantage personified by David Padgett. In 10 minutes, his play inside really set the tone. Three or three from the field, six points and six rebounds. Padgett having his way in the paint against the undersized Marquette front line. Now, there are so many cases where we go into a game and we talk about the speed of one team versus the size of the other. And it, it seems historically led, no disrespect to a big guy, but that speed usually prevails. But tonight so far, it's been the size and the tenacious defense of Louisville that has prevailed. And they've been helping each other and really neutralizing the quickness. Marquette, we, we saw that the fact that they were scoring eight baskets inside the paint, the way they get in the paint is off the dribble that guards have to attack. And Louisville, for the most part, has done a nice job of sealing that paint from the guards. Matthews posting up inside and a foul on Louisville. And it is going to be on Derek Character, an unpopular call here at Freedom Hall. As we check out the halftime stats, the lowest first half total for Marquette this season. They did not make a three for Louisville. Good, balanced contributions. And as we mentioned off the top of the show, they've got five players between about nine and a half and eleven and a half points per game. No one guy needs to carry the load at the offensive end. Well, this is a team that really prides itself on ball movement. Got some good passes, not only along the perimeter, but inside. David Padgett in particular, able to move the ball, get it where it needs to be. Keep in mind, though, as badly as things went for Marquette, in the first half, they got that late bucket by James with under a second to go. And now, all of a sudden, they're back within six. They've had a horrible shooting night, and they're right in this ball game. Well, coming back from a 12-point deficit for a team like Marquette, as explosive as they can be on the defensive end and in shooting the three, is not impossible. They'll meet again February 4th on ESPN, playing each other twice. And now Dwight Burke is called for the foul. Character and Burke, two big physical guys on the interior. Well, Dwight Burke, he's in the game to be a role player, to play strong defense down low, to try to body up. That time he got caught, but those two big bodies banging each other. Officials tried to let him play. Character still very active on the interior, fronted by Burke to feed into character for the easy layup. Now, that wasn't Dwight Burke's fault. If you're going to front, you need ball pressure. And Marquette didn't push up on the ball handle, allowed him good vision to hit the guy with the lob. And character just a wall down at the other end. Lazar Hayward ran right into his chest and missed the shot. Williams into Palacios to character, and he is fouled. That would have brought the house.
touchdown had that dunk gone down. Well, we talked about it just a few minutes ago about the pride in moving the ball around and excellent ball movement right there. Williams and Palacios and the trailer character coming straight down. And look, look how much room ball handler has. Williams just had good vision to be able to hit character with the lob. And if your guy, your big guy's going to front inside, you better help him out by putting pressure on the ball. Don't allow the pass to the seat. Now, Louisville in the first half had eight assists, and Len, they came from six different players. They do have point guards, whether it's Edgar Sosa or Andre McGee, but there's a real pass-first mentality up and down the roster right now for the Cardinals. And that's what creates the balance in scoring. Everybody gets involved. And Marquette needs Dominique James to find his game here in the second half. The only field goal in the first half was that floater in the final second. Marquette won on this floor last year. Louisville won up in Milwaukee. As Terrence Williams, I believe, is called for the foul for the Cardinals. Well, I think Louisville's starting to get the message right now. That wrist is bothering Dominique James more than he would let on. You know, they may want to test him and see if he can make a jump shot. You back off of him, you help prevent him from turning the corner on you, because that's where he hurts you, as we saw at the end of the first half. He hurt it nine days ago against Seton Hall, and he did play against Notre Dame on the weekend, still wearing a, a wrap on that right wrist. There was one moment during shoot-around today where he appeared to reach for it and grimace. He says it's all right, and he's playing through it, but he may not be 100%. Sosa defended by Matthews. James is on Jerry Smith. And Palacios had it, lost it, but it stays with the Cardinals and it bounds off Hayward. A seven point lead for Louisville here early in the second half with Freedom Hall, Dan Schulman, Len Elmore. Here with you on ESPN2. Glad you're with us as Sosa is stripped. Again, it'll stay with the cards. This is such a big game because there are so many competitive teams in this conference. Georgetown has lost once, beaten by Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's playing very well. Notre Dame is a factor. Villanova's a factor. I and mean, there's not much to separate the top five or six teams in this league. And those two games that are added in this 18, 18 conference game format, again, expands the possibilities that anything can happen. And we talk about anything can happen. Look at Cincinnati. Right there, kind of in the second level, a team that a lot of people didn't expect to finish higher than fourth. Williams is fouled before the shot. Keep in mind, this is the last year where just 12 teams out of the 16 of the Big East go to the Big East Championship in New York. Next year, it'll expand to all 16. But of the 12 who go, the top four get a first date by, and that's something that all coaches and players want to get. And let me finish my sentence. Cincinnati wasn't picked to finish above fourth from the bottom. And they're playing well. They won a game on this court this year. They beat Louisville by one point this season right here. And I had a chance to watch them early in the season against Memphis, and they played them pretty solidly at home. Dominic James called for the foul, his second. The bottom eight in the Big East right now. Again, the three New York City area teams struggling so badly. Connecticut and Providence in a good game tonight. And West Virginia, kind of a mix of Beeline and Huggins right now, gradually becoming more Huggy Bear, and they're playing team stuff as well. Wesley Matthews with the layup and the foul. Well, I'm sure Tom Green told his guys at halftime that the strategy of attacking continues to work. You just got to stay with it. Here, an open floor turnover, the thing that Louisville wanted to avoid, comes back to bite him again. As I said, with those guards between Matthews, McNeil, and Dominique James, when they're on the run, coming at you, they're hard to stop. So Matthews has 10 of the 25. Nobody else on Marquette has more than six tonight. Now 11 for Matthews as David Padgett has re-entered the game, and Derek Character sits down for Louisville. And now the crowd, as if sensing their team needs a little pick-me-up, they're going to make some noise as the Golden Eagles have it down to four. Seemed like towards the end of the first half, Louisville kind of relaxed a little bit. A little lackadaisical with the ball. That gave Marquette some life. He's carried over here in the second half. Again, a veteran, tough team into Marquette. Padgett into the game and right into the middle of the action as he lays it in. Well, he's the go-to guy right now. There's nobody on the floor with David Padgett in a post-up situation or on the move in the paint. There's nobody on the floor for Marquette that can stop him. 
the speed in the perimeter of the Golden Eagles against the depth in the bulk inside for the Cardinals. Rebound by Palacios, who has battled so many injuries over his career. Now a senior. Back problems, knee problems. Patch it again. On the move, in the paint. From Edgar Sosa, double figure scoring night for Padgett, and a timeout taken by Marquette. The lead is back up to eight here at Freedom Hall. The NCAA Women's Basketball Champions. Back out to eight of the 13th ranked Marquette Golden Eagles of Atlanta. They've had great success tonight with Edgar Sosa and David Padgett running the high screen and roll. Well, this is David Padgett, that senior smarts right here. You take a look as James tries to get over the screen to try to help. Uh, Padgett's man steps out, and Padgett has nothing to do but roll to the basket. That slip in the screen, nobody puts a body on him, and Edgar Sosa delivers it on the money. And Marquette's had an awful lot of problems trying to guard that screen and roll, particularly because Padgett's smart enough to know when to slip and know when to stay. All right, so they've been beaten four or five times by that play. Let's say you're the big guy guarding David Padgett. How do you defend against him? Well, one, you got to get a lot closer to David Padgett, almost get foot to foot with him when you're going to step out in heads and feel it. As soon as he leaves, you have to leave. You know your man's trying to get over the top, which James did on that particular play, or Acker did on that particular play. Louisville, which has been changing defenses often tonight, back into the 2 3 zone with Padgett in the middle. Shot clock under 10. And again, Marquette around the perimeter going side to side. James, a contested three is short. You can tell that wrist is bothering him. Even though shot clock running down and the three was contested, Dominic James just didn't get the pronation that he'd like. That wrap prevents his wrist from finishing and from his follow through, and that's why it was short. You can see Padgett has not missed a shot from the field. He's also got six rebounds tonight, a fifth year senior. He's having a strong night off the bench for the Cardinals. The kick out to Jerry Smith. Offensive rebound, Terrence Williams. Baseline jumper, Palacios. Marquette ball on the run. This is where they've been at their best, but Smith hustles back and breaks up a three on two. Well, it's an eight-point game now, but if recent history is any guide, it's going to get closer. There have been buzzer beaters over time and a fantastic finishes. That's been the norm recently when these two teams have met up. Indeed. Now, don't miss the last couple of minutes if you're watching a Marquette Louisville game. These are all recent. 2004, Damian Mason with a three point play with less than a second to go. Golden Eagles win by one over the Cardinals. Back into March of 2006, Dominic James forces overtime with a shot at the buzzer, but then Taekwon Dean takes over in overtime. Louisville wins in OT. And then last season, Jerry Smith, a Wisconsin native, up in Milwaukee, knocks down the shot, and Louisville gets out of. Marquette with a two-point win. Now, earlier today, Rick Pitino's on the elliptical in his in his office at their new practice facility, their beautiful new practice facility, watching ESPN Classic, and they're showing another recent game where Reese Gaines, a terrific player here at Louisville, hit a game-winning shot against Marquette. Gaines, like Jerry Smith, another Wisconsin native who broke the hearts of Marquette fans. The Cardinals by eight. Just over four minutes into the second half here at Freedom Hall. David Kubia back into the game in the backcourt now for Marquette. James is out there as well. Kubia on a good outside shooter. Marquette trying to find a way to solve his own land, and they've been unable to do so. Well, again, the Chris passing hasn't worked. The guys have been fumbling, and a lot of it has to do with the good footwork on Louisville, Louisville defenders. Terrence Williams, the tip by Patchett. Can anybody here stop this man? No block out. Padgett getting great position. He's just getting the job done. And he has not missed a shot. Six for six on the night. And again, such a feel-good story. A guy with so many injuries, suffered a broken kneecap earlier this year. Thought his season and collegiate career could be done. He is back, and he is a force. Hayward right over Padgett. And the rebound ripped down by Palacios, who is fouled. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, David Padgett is the last guy right now you want to leave. And you take a look, two guys go to help, and no one pays attention to David Padgett. You got a guy penetrating. You got to make sure, you got to communicate that if your teammate is going to the penetration, you better find Padgett and put a body on him. Sosa and Clark back into the game for the Cardinals. The lead was down to four, now back up to ten all of a sudden for Louisville. Padgett with Barrow defending him, draws the double team, finds the open man in Williams. It's a beautiful game when it's played well, isn't it, Lamb? And when it's played the way it's been drawn. And that's what Rick Pitino wanted his post guys to do, to be able to take the double and then kick it to the open man. James misses from close range. Yet another rebound for David Padgett. And Sosa, the save by Clark. Or did he? He was out of bounds. It will be a Louisville turnover. Well, that was a bit too much anticipation by Edgar Sosa. Good idea. Driving, trying to take the defense in one direction and dropping the bounce pass in another. But you got to be sure your guy is there. Matthews and James both sit down. Maurice Acker sat out last year as a transfer. Coming from Ball State back into the game. And Dan Fitzgerald, a 6'10 outside shooter. Number five is into the game for the Golden Eagles. And again, recognizing that Dominique James is not effective as a scorer. Can't get inside the paint. Or very seldom does he get in the paint. And right now, with his wrist, can't fire the jumper. McNeil, baseline. And it will stay with the Marquette. Nine to shoot. So he's replaced by Kubian, a good three-point shooter, as well as Fitzgerald. As Tom Crean looks to try to maybe spread the floor a little bit and get some better shots, particularly if Louisville persists in the zone. Just three points tonight for James, one of five from the floor. Andre McGee back into the game for the Cardinals, and we've got a foul on the inbounds play. Jerry Smith picks it up. His first and the team's fifth. Marquette has committed six fouls already this half. Here's Acker, all of 5'8, but a good ball handler. Can he find a way to solve the zone? Early returns are in, and the answer is no. <laughs> it's a good idea, though. Again, staying with the strategy of attacking off the bounce, getting into the creases or the gaps, and getting in the paint, and then looking to kick to somebody. But as I mentioned on the edge of Sosa play, same thing. You got to be sure the guy's there. Now Marquette has seen a lot of zone win, especially in conference play. They saw some from Providence, saw some from Notre Dame, saw some from West Virginia. What is it about tonight that's flustering them so much? Well, I think it's the change of defenses for one, and secondly. The inability of, for the point guards to get any penetration to be able to kick or anyone else. Louisville doing a nice job of using that back line guys, whether it's in man or zone, to step up early and thwart the penetration. And it kind of throws the whole timing up. Barrow picks up his third in character to the line for Louisville. suspension Derek character basically apologized to everybody he could apologize to he said I know I've got to do better I, I, I forgive down some folks <laughs> here's the quote from Derek character I've really had to prove myself to my teammates I've had a lot of bad habits I want to show everybody I belong here there were times especially last year then where Rick Pitino seemed about at the end of his rope with Derek Characters. Things seem to have improved this year, and he's only missed one game for disciplinary reasons. Well, you credit Rick Pitino for hanging in there with him, recognizing his job as a coach. You bring a young man here, you're a surrogate parent. And you've got to be able to take the same measures, have the same patience, but exercise the same discipline that good parents do. The crowd appreciating the effort that Louisville is giving on the defensive end. McNeil, nowhere to go, caught underneath the basket. Preston Knowles, his first appearance tonight. And the freshman from Winchester, Kentucky, knocks down a mid-range jumper. Timeout, Marquette. about fast break transition situation. Look at Knowles with the ball fake, recognize, hey, I'm by myself, and buries it. 
And Louisville playing with such confidence right now as they withstood their little low, allowing Marquette to get close. And right now it's a 12-0 run for Louisville over the last five minutes. Just one game in our week of impact here on the ESPN family of networks with Indiana taking on Minnesota. Tubby Smith's team's playing pretty well. He's off to a good start. That'll be tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern over on ESPN. Number one, North Carolina, which just survived against Georgia Tech, will take on the Terps Saturday afternoon on ABC. Clemson and Duke, the Blue Devils, have beaten Clemson 21 times in a row. And don't forget about Kentucky and Florida Saturday night, a game day game as Reese and Hubert, Jay and Digger will all be down in Gainesville, Florida, Kentucky and Florida, a great SEC rivalry, and the Kentucky team trying to find its way against a very young Florida team, but a team with a lot of ability. When you talk about Clemson, Duke, Clemson could have ended that scheme last year, but for a timing error, they thought they had gotten right. it done. That's right. How about Maurice Acker, coast to coast for his first bucket of the night, and that snaps the 12-0 run. Marquette now in man-to-man -man steel mode as much as they can, and that's a mismatch right there. Oh, Clark against Dan Fitzgerald. Clark too long, too quick. And Fitzgerald called for the foul. Oh, it's on Barrow. It's on Usman Barrow, so it's his fourth. And even not starting him and limiting his minutes hasn't kept Barrow into foul trouble tonight. But the problem is you put a lot of pressure on your back line when you can't contain guys off the bounce. And particularly a guy that is as athletic as Earl Clark is, he's still 6'8", and probably longer than that. Probably got a wingspan that goes beyond the 6'8". And uh, Dan Fitzgerald has got to protect his big guys as well as the rest of the perimeter players and keeping them from penetrating so often. That's what hurts Barrow, and it hurts uh, Burke as well. Barrow among those who leave for Marquette. Dominic James among those who return. Tom Green makes three substitutions. Marquette still without a made three-pointer on the night. And once again, you're seeing the point guard going east-west in their half court. Now, when they get full court opportunities, yeah, after a drove by McNeil, Wesley Matthews, and in the half court, very difficult for Marquette to get in the paint and get a penetrating kick. Tough baseline jumper is there for Jarrell McNeil. McNeil known more for his defense, but he is a double-figure scorer, averaging 13 and a half per game for the Golden Eagles. He's among the nation's leaders in steals as well, at about two and a half per game. Williams looking inside for character, who's battling with Burke. And it is off Burke out of bounds, so it'll be Louisville ball when we come back. Marquette struggling so badly offensively tonight. They are down by 13 here at Freedom Hall. Louisville, Louisville, how do you say it? I say Louisville. Louisville. I don't know if that's right or not, but that's the way I say it. I think the, the locals, it's a two-syllable word. It's Louisville. Louisville. So but you and I are still both at about two and a half syllables. McNeil on the drive, and he will go to the line. That would be a big win for Tennessee over Vandy. They've got themselves uh, one of the game day games next month at Memphis. Remember, Memphis, one of the three undefeated still in the country. And their conference may not test them as much as some of the other big-time teams. But they've still got Tennessee coming to Memphis. And that should be a great game February 23rd. Well, smart move by John Calipari in making that schedule and make sure that he tests his team throughout. Get them battle tested for the NCAA tournament. Padgett back in for character. David Padgett has been one of the big stories in this game tonight. Six of six shooting, 12 points, eight rebounds, and a lot of the offense running through him. I think good time for Rich Pitino to rest some of his guys as he has, recognizing that Marquette's expending an awful lot of energy right now trying to get back in this ball game with his starters. Magic comes out high to receive the pass. Williams to Padgett. Back to Williams. Louisville moving the ball much more crisply most of the night than Marquette has. Smith takes a bump, leaves it short. And it will be Cardinal basketball with a fresh 35. Again, even in a triangle, 
The post up man, you got a guy on the wing and a guy at the top. Just crisp ball movement by Louisville looking to try to find the open man. Very unselfish play. And that was the key, one of the keys that Rick Pitino talked about before the game, not to have the ball stationary up top, to have it moving constantly against this aggressive Marquette defense. Williams and another assist for David Padgett. Double figures now for Williams with 10. And it's easier said than done to tell your post guys to take the double team. A lot of guys get antsy in there when the double team comes, but David Padgett, well seasoned, understands how to do it. And Marquette having to work so hard for a clean look at the other end. Off the glass and good for Jarrell McNeil. Now we've seen several times in succession that Marquette going back to trying to attack the gaps or attack the man off the bounce. Being much more aggressive. And they've had success when they've been able to do it. But when they get stagnant at the top and start going east-west, that's when they have the problems. McNeil and Matthews each with 11 to lead the Golden Eagles. Patchett's got a dozen for Louisville. Offensive rebound. Clark just went right over the top of Wesley Matthews for that rebound. Now, a lot of people would say that's over the back, but I think the problem was Wesley Matthews never made contact or little contact with David Padgett. To see him trying to go up. Actually, Clark did have a little elbow on him. Tried to hold him up. I think the officials missed it. But here's where you take the double team. Padgett waited. And every postman, pretty much for Louisville, has had the patience to wait for the double to commit. And then they kick it back outside. As I said, that's easier said than done. All too many times you see guys get very antsy. And again, here's the luxury that Rick Pitino now has. And let's keep in mind what is now a strength was a weakness earlier because of the injuries to Padgett and Palacios. But he knows with Padgett, Palacios, Clark, and character, nobody's going to have a burnout factor. Everybody can play 15, 20, 25 minutes. Two of them are in the game at all times. He's got a lot of fouls between them. And how many teams in America have four capable capable guys to play at the four and five spots? And you recognize the 933 giving Padgett a blow right here. In the event that this game gets tighter down the stretch, he's got the luxury of bringing a fresh David Padgett back in the ball game. And Padgett has really more than held his own inside. He's been the critical advantage for Louisville. Second foul on Smith. Accurate to the line. And here's what Rick Pitino currently has at his disposal with four big guys. Yeah, and I mean, you look at the athleticism of Earl Clark. Obviously, the experience of Juan Palacios played more games than anybody on this team. The raw talent and power of Derek Character. I mean, you've got a nice mix there, a nice balance that you can mix and match. And we haven't even mentioned Terrence Williams, who is the, the small forward on this team, but he's an athletic, strong 6'6", who can play inside and out. He's handling the ball right now. He's their second leading rebounder. He leads them in assists. A lot of pieces in the puzzle right now, and everybody's healthy. Well, Terrence Williams is like the queen on the chessboard. He can do just about anything. Be deployed anywhere. Pacino talks about how smart he is and how hard he works. They rate each player at each practice on a one to five basis in terms of effort just effort and it's a rarity when Terrence Williams doesn't get a foul. Boy that was pretty physical right there Maurice Acker dogging Andre McGee who creates the turnover and this crowd getting into it and they may have a point a lot of contact on that but you cannot blame Maurice Acker just keeps going at it and going at it. look right there one bump another one there off the foot of McGee Again, in transition, open floor turnovers when Marquette can get them. You know, it helps them a whole lot. And Rick Pitino immediately goes to Edgar Sosa with McGee coming out. And you should have seen the emotion on the Marquette bench after that play. Coaches and players alike feeling that, hey, maybe the tide is turning and there's still a ton of time left in this game. And that works for you, but it also works against you. You come back, you expend an awful lot of energy. Rick Pitino's got some fresh bodies on that bench. Tom Green trying to rest his guys as he's our Hayward ready to come back in the ballgame. Sosa, yes! Seven for Sosa. Sosa, almost all the time tonight, has played under control and within the offense. He's made a lot of good decisions. Jarrell McNeil is now the go-to guy offensively for Marquette with 16. Dominic James is in the game, but offensively has not been much of a factor. Point 
the pass inside and character fouled hard and immediately helped up by James the foul before the shot. Now the week of impact continues with two great college basketball games Saturday afternoon on ESPN. Lynn will be in Syracuse as the Orange host the Villanova Wildcats and then at 2 Eastern into the Big Ten Illinois taking on Purdue. Week of impact running right through Saturday night with the Kentucky Florida game. There were some great games last night. The North Carolina Georgia Tech game. Duke got a battle for about 35 minutes from Florida State. The great finish at the end of the Virginia Tech Virginia game. At the line character, Dwight Burke picks up the foul. So it's four on Burke. Barrow, who's coming back into the game now, he's got four. Burke is among those who leaves. Pretty solid night for Derek Herrick. Yeah, I mean, it's about time, I think a lot of people would say, four consecutive single-figure games coming into this game. He's getting more involved in the offense right now. The lead is at 12. It was down to four earlier this half, and then Louisville won on a 12 to nothing run. Most of the night in the 2 3 zone for the Cardinals. James kept the foot down. McNeil misses the dunk. Cardinal ball. Crusher that could turn out to be for the Golden Eagles. They finally solved the zone. They penetrated. They got a good look and they came up empty. You can look shot. Back in Louisville, the home of Muhammad Ali, the museum. He was born here, and today is his birthday. 66 years old. Former Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr., three-time world heavyweight champion. Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Century. That's called Louisville Home Gold Medalist back in 1960. Happy birthday, Muhammad Ali. You walk around this city and you can see just a living icon, Prince of the City, you might call him. Also the birthday boy, Earl Clark, as he leaves his teenage years behind here today, turning 20. And Louisville's had a little float like a butterfly, a little sting like a bee in him tonight. They have played some tough defense tonight on Marquette, and that has been a staple of Rick Pitino teams and of this team in recent games. Well, that's the defensive focus that Rick Pitino has tried to get his guys to buy into. With Georgetown, they're in Louisville's in the top 20 in scoring defense in the nation. And with Georgetown, Connecticut, Louisville is in the top 15 in field goal percentage his defense so Big East with a major focus defensively two teams preseason picked to go a long way Georgetown and Louisville were picked tied for first to top the Big East standings as Terrence Williams knocks it down Marquette not far behind picked third and now that Louisville is healthy again you can once again see why they were picked so highly and Marquette's not going away this is a, a veteran group that's been to the NCAA tournament each of the last two years although they have not gotten out of the first round either of the last two years Barrow with another miss in close well, not getting on him but it's been a team-wide problem here tonight as they have gotten to the rim on several occasions but have not finished and this is the Louisville team that people anticipated even though Patrick Colossus is not at 100 percent but they certainly give the young players a boost and actually make them better. Terrence Williams again. T. Will with 14 tonight. And speaking of making people better, that's what Terrence Williams has also done out there on the floor, even in the absence of Juan Palacios and David Patrick. He's been the leader. Kubion, nowhere to go. And a foul on the baseline. Kubion will go to the line. Both teams are over the limit. When you talk about Marquette, I mean, you know, they have numbers, as I mentioned before, and in Big East Conference play, the number one in scoring margin, free throws, assists, steals, overall in the top five in many of those categories. So their stats speak for themselves, but you can recognize how difficult it is to play on the road in the Big East, and that's why when you're picked in that upper echelon, you know you got to maintain home serve. And you also have to steal a few on the road. It's going to be hard to steal, particularly here in Freedom Hall. Rubion misses the front end. And we've got a Marquette foul on Dwight Burke. And that's going to be all for Burke. 
Well, Burke, we talked about him again, a role player, big body, expected to rebound, set strong screen, but very foul prone, in part because of inexperience to some extent. But the other side of it is, again, his teammates can't allow a lot of penetration to pick up bad fouls trying to help out. Well, you talk about how tough it is to win on the road in this or any league, really. And Marquette's got another road game coming up. Their next game is Sunday at Connecticut. It's a, a noon game, so they'll go home tonight, have a day to practice, and then head out to Connecticut on Saturday, play Sunday afternoon. And they're hoping to get home in time for the beginning of the Packer game because all the Marquette guys are very interested in how the Packers will do against the Giants on Sunday evening. Here's their upcoming schedule after UConn. A couple of home games against Paul in South Florida. Remember, Cincinnati is improving rapidly that will be a tough game and then the rematch against the Cardinals on ESPN February 4th before a February 9th game at Notre Dame and the Irish will be out looking for revenge they were beaten by 26 by the Golden Eagles this past weekend and Notre Dame found out firsthand its first true road game it's a lot different than playing on neutral yeah. sites. Yeah, the Irish should have played early in New York and in the Virgin Islands, but didn't play a true road game until conference play. Not completely unheard of among big time programs out of the big leagues. This matches the largest deficit that Marquette has faced at any point this season. They've only lost twice. Once at West Virginia, now James is down. Fell on that wrist. Yeah. It's something that we had talked about. He heard it against Seton Hall just over a week ago, and he appeared to be favoring it at times, and that clearly he has injured it again. I think as he tried to make that acrobatic shot, he instinctively, as he's fallen, reached out with his right hand to break his fall. And that wrist is not strong enough to support it. grandmother is among those who are in attendance here tonight. James is from Richmond, Indiana. Tilly Bowen, Dominique James's grandmother, looking on with obvious concern. Her grandson's still down on the floor. Such an important part of this team. And one of the best point guards in the Big East. And trying to turn on the baseline. You see him put his right hand down and try to break his fall as he tries to make that acrobatic shot. Again, with that kind of pain, and the risk that limits him from doing what he does. I mean, you wonder how he could even summon up the strength and the fortitude, the courage to really get out there and play. I mean, he's obviously doing it for his team. And the pain is felt by Grandma, no question about it. Dan Fitzgerald in off the bench to shoot the free throws for the injured James. for Tom Crane. He's got to think about trying to win this game, obviously. But the big picture, even if they don't come back tonight, they need Dominique James to be healthy to get where they hope to go this season. This is a very talented team. They've had a rough night, but a very talented team capable of good things. And Dominique James in obvious pain being tended to over on the Marquette bench. And the first point that you made trying to win this game, you probably will allow Dominique James to make a decision whether he plays, but now it's Tom Crean's decision. And I'm sure that decision is keep Dominic James on the bench. Terrence Williams again. 17 on the night for Williams. It's the largest lead of the game for the Cardinals. Maurice Acker misses the three. Fitzgerald with the offensive rebound. And you see Marquette trying to spread the floor, trying to get some room to work, move the ball, try to get some looks at from three. It's not happening for them. They have not made a three tonight. Their earlier low from beyond New York was 2 of 16 this year against Chaminade, and you can see the last time that they got shut out from beyond New York was against Chaminade in, Ho in Hawaii, in Maui. It has been a while. 
Marquette was the runner up out of Maui, losing a tough four point a game to Duke, their only other loss to West Virginia. Padgett just ripped down his ninth rebound and was fouled, and will shoot two double bonus both ways. And Jarrell McNeil is back in for Hayward. A strong night for David Padgett. And he absolutely personified the height advantage, size advantage, both height and width that Louisville had against Marquette. And those are the three guards. The big man may be long, but they're slight. And Louisville made full advantage. Now Louisville came in having won seven out of eight. The only loss, a home one-point loss to Cincinnati. But they're getting healthier and healthier, and they're getting better and better. Looking to go to three and one in the lead. McNeil. Matthews, and he's fouled hard by Padgett. Good sportsmanship there, David Padgett. Helps Matthews up. And pretty much just his character was fouled hard several minutes ago by Dominic James, and Padgett just went for the ball. Good clean play. Good hard foul. As a shot blocker, I always say if you're going to do it clean and you can't get it, get your money's worth. <laughs> you don't want to hurt anybody, but that sends a message. Yeah, but make sure he's yeah. not going for three. Make sure they, they got to earn it with a couple of free throws as Palacios comes out. And Matthews never appeared to take exception to the foul at all. He's a big, strong young man as well. He understands what it's like going inside. Matthews knocks him down. Still a big mountain to climb for the Golden Eagles. Under five to go down to 17 with Dominic James on the bench with an injured wrist. This crowd's still looking for those little ticky tacks. They'll take what they can get. Williams with a shot clock under 10, knocked away. But a foul is called by John Cow. Jarrell McNeil. Disappointed look on Dominic James' face. You know he wishes he could help his team. And it might be a little trepidation about the future with that wrist. Might keep him out a little bit longer. James not the only key player within the Big East to suffer an injury this year. All of these very serious injuries with four of the five out for the season. LeVance Fields could return basically around the time of the Big East tournament. But Syracuse and Pittsburgh and Louisville early this season hit hard by injuries. Even Mike Williams of Cincinnati, we, we see the surprise that Cincinnati has become. Mike Williams, their best player, as Nick Cronin will tell you. They lose him early, and he's still able to be competitive. By the way, after the free throws, now a game-high 19 points for Terrence Williams. Reversed by McNeil, not there, but tip back up and in. I believe it was Hayward. John Hayward, Mike Gray, the head coach of Notre Dame, said a few days ago he's the most improved player in the Big East. He's gone from a bench guy getting 16 minutes per game to a starter who has basically doubled his scoring and rebounding this year. Stripped by Fitzgerald. They still battle for it, and Clark comes up with it. And a timeout is called by Rick Pitino. 17 point lead for the Cardinals late in this game here in Louisville. You and Len Louisville comes in having won three in a row. They've beaten Kentucky, West Virginia, and Rutgers, two of them road wins. Those three games by an average of 13 points per game. Now they're up double figures on Marquette. It's just kind of a. A win that people take notice of for the Louisville Cardinals? Absolutely. And again, you look at how they've done it. They've done it defensively. This is a team, Marquette is averaging 80 points a game. And right now they're at 46 with 3 minutes and 34 seconds. In the last seven wins, Louisville's just allowed 58 points. So people know they can stop, folks. Dan? Scott over on ESPN momentarily, Indiana and Minnesota. So a big night of sports action still to come on the family of networks. That would be a very nice win, Lynn, for Providence to pick up. We're talking about how tough it is to win on the road to go uh, into Connecticut and come out of there with a win. The Friars would go to three and two in league play quietly, doing pretty well.
Yeah, those are gifts out there, and every game has impact. You know, that's how you start climbing the ladder, stealing a few on the road and being able to hold serve at home. Matthews commits the foul. Number three on him, and back to the line again will go the Cardinals. And UConn, I really thought that after the Notre Dame game, they went down 21, came back to take the lead. They had kind of gelled as a team, even though they lost that game. And Joyce Center, a very tough place to play. I thought that they had come of age, but uh, you know, it's been up and down, up and down. And I think Jim Calhoun won. Hope he's, uh, hope he's getting better. I know he was on the sidelines in this game, but I think Jim Calhoun is developing the patience of Job with some very talented guys. Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price. We're here at Sold Out Freedom Hall, the home of the Louisville Cardinals for a big time matchup of the Big East between Louisville and Marquette. Great anticipation there by Jerry Smith. The Louisville defense has really been the dominant story tonight, holding a team that's averaging 80 points per game to 46. And the news only gets worse for Marquette with Dominique James leaving a few minutes ago with an aggravation of a right wrist injury. Fell on it hard after trying to make a reverse layup. An injury he originally suffered just over a week ago against Seton Hall. He has taken the wrap off his right wrist, but you can see uh, still bothered by it. Sure doesn't look like he's going to be coming back in. And just instinctively, Len, as anybody would do, tried to break his fall with his hand. Yeah, and that's just an unfortunate situation. You try to go with him. I'm sure the young man made the decision. He wants to keep playing. But at some point, again, Tom Green has to exercise discretion. He's got to hold them out till it's better because those types of accidents can continue to occur if he continues to play. And the guy who just laid it in, Maurice Acker, a transfer out of Ball State, his first year playing after sitting out as a transfer last year. He may become a more important member of this team, depending on how long, if at all, James is out. Well, Acker has shown some signs now. In the last two games coming into this, and he had five, he averaged five assists. Had five assists in 14 minutes in their Notre Dame win. So he knows how to distribute the ball. He may not be the scorer Dominic James is, but he can make guys better. Big nights for Louis for David Padgett and Terrence Williams among others there's Padgett with two more 15 on the night for the senior and another case of screen and roll slip the screen get to the open spot McNeil and Hayward with a terrific offensive rebound and put back on the wrist still bothering Dominic James and getting up and congratulating people with the left hand that that right wrist and hand is out of commission right now and you can see the worry on the face of James one of the better point guards around Sosa is fouled well, the week of impact continues with ACC action coming up Saturday, both on ABC and ESPN at 3.30 Eastern, number one, and unbeaten, but just barely, North Carolina takes on Maryland, and then at 6 Eastern on ESPN, it'll be Clemson against Duke. Do you look at the, the three undefeateds? Have they earned that, that level above everybody else, or do you put a UCLA, a Duke, a Tennessee, some of those other teams right up there with them? No, I think those three teams right now are the best teams, but what's happened with the close game situations that they've endured you know they're just not that far away from everybody else that's really what it comes down to and all three of them have played representative schedules you know they haven't played a schedule full of cupcakes so to speak but nevertheless they still have to earn all of their wins particularly the ones on the road as North Carolina found out Kansas playing some great basketball, but they will be tested in Columbia Saturday night, 8 Eastern on ESPNU against a good Missouri team. Acker couldn't get the shot off. Gets it back from Hayward. And the rebound to Sosa. We near the final minute of play, and Louisville is on its way to a 3-1 and one record in the Big East. Terrence Williams did not like the foul from David Kubian, but gets over it relatively quickly. But Louisville will move into a tie for the conference lead at 3-1 and one with Pittsburgh, Georgetown, and Notre Dame. Marquette will drop to 3-2. and two. Louisville kind of getting back even. That loss to Cincinnati towards the end of the season in a battle for one of the top spots could have loomed very large but right now this is one of those situations where beating the number 13 in the country makes you feel a little bit better about your chances right now as you say battling now for for a top spot in a tie they've won eight of their last nine games holding opponents under 60 points 
and the average of 58 points is going to drop even further because I don't think Marquette's up to scoring eight points in the next minute. On a team uh, that was ranked top 10 preseason, all the injuries sidetracked them for a while, but it looks like the Cardinals are definitely on the road to back to becoming a national force. And they're doing it with D. Padgett called for the foul. Padgett missing 10 games, Palacios missing 9. Their return to health really coinciding with Louisville's return to national prominence this year. And I maintain again, their presence on the floor really helps guys like Edgar Sosa, Earl Clark. But because of their high basketball IQ, Jerry Smith, you know, they move the ball, they're in the right position. Padgett's one of those guys that, you know, as we heard, when guys aren't in the right position in practice, he'll physically take yeah. them and move them over. And yeah. the guys accept it because they respect his leadership so much. All smiles for character in the Cardinals. The Australian Open is coming up next here on ESPN2. And we just saw Derek Character, as you mentioned, smiling. But he's one of the guys that benefits terrifically from Padgett's presence because Padgett's constantly in his ear. Sosa coast to coast has it knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the cards. Palacios, McGee, Character, all enjoying a win over the 13th ranked team of the country. Louisville out rebounding Marquette by 10 tonight, a big story. And Marquette still without a three. They might get the ball back. They're going to get the ball back one more time, but this could be the first time in a number of years that the Golden Eagles don't hit a three in a ball game. And a bit of warning for Louisville. Upcoming games at Seton Hall, at South Florida. Obviously, playing on the road is no gimme, but those are winnable games for Louisville. Can't suffer an emotional letdown after this performance. And I'm sure Rick Pitino won't let that happen. Double-double for Padgett. 17 points and 10 rebounds, and it's over. A 20-point win for Rick Pitino's Louisville Cardinals. A terrific performance at the defensive end as they beat Marquette 71-51 to tonight here at Freedom Hall. Coming up next, live tennis action from the 2008 Australian Open presented by Franklin Templeton Investments. A post-game extra from this game can be found momentarily over on ESPN News. For Len Elmore and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanking you for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now we take you down under.